In this video, I'm going to show you how to solder ICs with thermal pads in your DIY projects. There are a couple of different options and it depends if you have designed the PCB yourself or if you're using a ready-made PCB. If you have a PCB from somewhere else, you probably have just a big copper pads or something, maybe, maybe, maybe thermal wires through, but otherwise you really don't have any other option to solder this than to use the hot air gun. And it always works. The only problem with hot air gun is that even if you use the, the smaller tip, it still spreads the heat over quite large areas. So you actually end up desoldering your decoupling caps and other passives as well. If you make the PCB yourself, you of course have some options how to deal with these uh, thermal pads. This is how I used to do it in the past. So I, I made holes. There is one, one big uh, IC with a large thermal pad here and then uh, there are two opums here. So I just made a big hole, big plated hole in the middle so you can, you can actually solder this with soldering iron. It just, you just need enough heat and a little bit of steel surface to touch with the tip of the iron, but, but you can solder this. It's not very elegant solution and the hole still needs to be quite big. So soldering this SO8 is still fine, but like, for example, this one I have here, it's so small that it's, it's, it's difficult to, to make a hole for that. It's also, you, you cannot really use reflow with this kind of port. So if you, if you want to reflow, you need to make another port for that. And it can be also a bit tricky to, to check if it's, if it is properly soldered. So, but, but you can do that if you just solder one, one pin and then solder the pad and try that it's, it's not moving. What I've done now in, in new ports. So this is, um, my, AK4490 duct test board. Here I have used thermal pads with vias. Then I've extended the opening in the solder mask a little bit. I can actually try to, to heat it from here from the side if it's enough to, to solder the pad. And then I also have the mask openings on the bottom side. So at least here I should be able to to heat the pad from the bottom side. It would be better to do this soldering with soldering paste, but I don't have paste, so I'm, I'm just gonna try it with, uh, with just normal solder and, and, and a bit of extra, extra flux. I have here my, my print to check that uh, I'm soldering the right component because I'm not gonna solder everything here. So now I'm gonna solder this uh, tiny LT30 Four two. So that's gonna be over there, because now it's it's so small that I need to be a little bit more careful with the amount of solder I actually use there. <clears throat> and flux again. At this point, trying to figure out the orientation of the chip. And then let's start heating from the bottom side. Just a little bit of solder to improve the heat transfer. Then try to find the spot there. Okay, it's bubbling already, so that's quite quick. And it's a little bit off. I have the footprint I have for this chip is not, it's quite tight. There's not much space for extra misalignment. Thank you. 
one thing with this this approach is that probably now I have these large openings in the mask so the, the solder is going a little bit everywhere when it actually starts melting but if you if you really have the correct size in the middle of the thermal pad I would assume that you it would just align itself when you when it when the solder gets melted so that's something to try next time when I don't need to do these silly large side openings anymore. Now I'm gonna solder one um, ADP 7118 voltage regulator. This one has the thermal pad in the bottom. It's not as small as the other one I have here. So I know now that the side pad doesn't work, so I wanna just solder it from the bottom side. Put some solder there. A little bit of flux is always good. Then I prepare the bottom side by putting some solder there. And also same time my soldering iron tip. And now it's just aligning this approximately there. And then start heating from the bottom side. see that solder gets soft quite quickly and then just keep it in place and remove the soldering iron and everything is is good and then when the thermal paddle is uh, pad is soldered then just solder the pins it's a bit Big tip now. I also haven't used the thermal reliefs on this one, so it's a bit tricky to solder some of the pins. It's not pretty, but it, it will work. As I said, it's not pretty, but it will work. A little bit of extra solder there where it shouldn't be. So I haven't used the uh, thermal reliefs here around this IC. On the bottom side, it's just an ugly lump of solder. I still need to tidy it a little bit. Now I'm going to show you how to solder a chip using the hot air gun, which is the kind of more traditional method to do it. Here I have my um, kind of experimental ADC board for AKM AK5572 ADC. Um, it has, so the chip has a um, thermal pad, large thermal pad. It's a QFN package, so it's not the most DIY-friendly package, but it's it, it, it's quite easy to solder still. Um, I made a mistake on this PCB that I forgot to put copper fill. So the idea was that I could solder this the same way as I saw, I've shown before, uh, soldering from the bottom side, but here the Solder copper fill is missing from the top and bottom layer. But it's a four layer port, so the, the thermal wires are still connected in the middle, so the thermal heat conduction should be still okay. Again, I don't have a solder paste, so I'm just gonna use normal solder. I'm just gonna put first some solar, it's just 
directly on the thermal pad here and a little bit on the thermal bias there's a flux So now the pitch in this QFN is quite small, so you need to get it quite accurately aligned. Another problem is that I don't have a solder base, so I have actually hard copper there, so it's it's of course it's not completely flat on the, on the PCB, but when you think that it's relatively well aligned, then just take the hot air gun. I have now set it to 320 degrees. Now somehow the camera is coming away a little bit, but I'm just trying to do it somehow. So then just start heating it. I think the tip here could be a little bit bigger also now. That's one of the things I don't really like the heat, hot air heating because it's a bit difficult to control. You don't know how, how much you're heating everything and if it's going to be overheated and so on. Okay, now it kind of looks like that it's it's getting soldered, yeah. And the problem is now that there is no copper, so it's just sliding away. Okay, now I need to sneak a little bit to see that it's. Yeah, it looks good. And then when you're soldering the rest, just put some flux here on the side. And it just kind of goes automatically almost. don't really need much solar here. And that's that's good. Then we can just clean the flux residuals. I have my partner's nail polish remover here to clean the flux residuals. It's not necessary to do it, but if you if you make a bit more mess, then you can do it. After you've soldered all the components, it's going to be looking quite messy anyway. For this quick work, I would say it looks quite nice and tidy. The chip I soldered before filming this, uh, I didn't have any problems that it started sliding away. So it was a little bit of a demo effect, but the result looks still very good. In addition to the ADC, I have two opams here as well with uh, thermal pads. So these actually should have been the SO8 packets, the normal opam packets, but I accidentally ordered wrong packets and these are quite expensive opams. So 
I just kept, I, I just changed the, the footprint on the board because this is more like a test board anyway. So another difference is that I actually do have the solder on top layer here, but I don't have it in the bottom. So again, I cannot solder it from the bottom, but it should go a little bit easier now here on top. So I'm gonna do the same, just put a little bit of solder here. A little bit of flux. And try, then try the position. I have the most stable hands to that. So now, what I'm gonna, what I'm expecting to happen, what I've mentioned in the beginning of the video is that now when I have the correct size mask opening here, it should align itself. So there, there is no the side opening in this time because when I made this board, I knew already that it's not gonna work. So let's see what's gonna happen. This should go also faster. It's quite small. Oh, yeah. Well, that's another problem again. Uh, the airflow. And the camera is a little bit so I cannot put it straight on top. I will try. Okay, yeah, it's probably not visible on camera, but it kind of did align itself, although it's not completely straight there. Probably not enough looks. Let's try another one. It is there. Well, again, it didn't really wor work as well as the one I did before the video, but yeah, if you have enough flux there, and or probably if you need, uh, if you use a proper solder based, you don't really need to move it at all. It just kind of sucks itself in the place. But anyway, it's it's quite easy to to use the hot air to solder these. Again, when you have a plank board, when you have all the passives around, what happens is that you're just gonna desolder everything, and then because of the airflow, the passives are flying around. So, yeah, it's it's a lot easier to do on a plank board.